Well, welcome back to our Telecommuting for Success series. Today, I'm here with Jamie, who is the CEO and founder of Smarty Social Media. Now, Jamie's created a phenomenal organization that is not only a social media you know, conglomerate in terms of the work that they do in the medical profession, but she's also created an incredible team of moms and you know other humans as well. But one of the things that I really love about her is her sponsorship of how do you navigate being a mom and a leader and being on a team. Um, especially during these times, Jamie, really appreciate you coming on and taking this, you know, sharing your wisdom with us because these are unparamounted times for all of us in regards to having the kids at home, trying to run a business, trying to lead a team and navigate all of it. So yeah. do you mind just leading off a little bit, um, kind of what's this been like for you navigating the past several weeks? It's been interesting because, you know, I started my agency almost seven years ago now, and we were virtual to begin with, um, and we all work remote. I had people from all over the world, actually, that um, worked for us. So we were very much like accustomed to remote work and virtual teams. Um, but in March of last year, I actually opened up our office here. Um, Which is actually beautiful. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and it's been such a, an interesting ride because, you know, back in March, I, I had to transition to having an office and, and having people kind of schedule time in the office, um, offer a lot of flexibility so um, people can work from home on the days that they need to and then come in when they need to. Um, so when the the order came down to, you know, shelter in place and work from home, um, it was kind of, it was still a big shift, even though we were pretty accustomed to um, remote working. Um, and it was just kind of like relearning it all over again, um, you know. And, and that was one of the reasons um, we originally connected through a, a dear friend, a, a business coach that we both worked with, Jim, who will be on, on the series in a couple of weeks. And because you're in a way a pro at doing the virtual work and started out that way seven years ago and did that for many, many years. And yet here you are transitioning just like the rest of us. And the environment at home I imagine is very different. I know you had two children, one second grade, one seventh grade, who are both home with you yes. while you're trying to even just you know stay afloat and keep swimming. Yeah. So what does home look like for you now, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, home is very different, um, I think. The dynamic of just working from home is already difficult when you have children, but when you have children that aren't at school, it becomes very stressful. So I think it's really important about just kind of setting yourself up for success and building a bit of structure. Um, I think the first week we like massively failed at all of it because you know, <laughs> we didn't have a structure yet. <laughs> and, okay. you know, I'm fortunate enough that my husband is home too. So it's, it's literally like a, Hey, I'm jumping on a big, important call. Please make sure the kids don't come in this room. Um, and we have kind of an open office, but you know, I need to be in a, a, a set aside room and the, and the kids kind of have to know, you know, when that door's closed, mommy's working and, you know, you have to understand how to help yourself, you know, and I think what I told them was unless this is a dire emergency and somebody is bleeding <laughs> or oh. is hurt, do not come in here, you know, unless I open the door, that means, you know, you can, you can come in. Um, so that's what we've been doing um, is you know, getting everybody set up with what they need before I jump into my work, I think is super important. I get up really early, you know, 4.30, 5 o'clock sometimes so that I can get a handful of my emails and work done so that the morning doesn't feel so stressful, um, trying to balance that out. Um, and then, you know, you take a break and you get them set just like you would for school. Um, and then- so you know, kind of modeling the same schedule that they had before perhaps? Well, you know- As much as you can? As much as you can. I mean, I miss the structure. I mean, I think having the structure of kids in school, like what I've learned over the years, even as a virtual team, because most of my um, employees and team members are moms, um, is that we have we work great when the school year is in place. <laughs> I when that. Come, everything's it is a disaster, and we just have to like rearrange everything we do around summer because you know parents have to drop off at multiple camps, the pickups at noon sometimes, you're juggling a, a bunch of sports and extracurricular stuff, and there's no structure. You, you're not guaranteed a window of time. And that's kind of what this is like now is sort of like 
you have to kind of be prepared that you don't know that if your kid's going to wake up sick that morning or if for whatever reason they're having a rough morning and are emotional. And I think what happens is if you let the environment be stressful, then they feed on that. And then yeah. the whole day kind of spirals out of control. That's absolutely true. And so a couple of quick things that I just heard you mention is one, you and the family have all agreed upon some what I would call stimulus markers as a neuroscientist and a psychologist. Of, okay, <laughs> doors open, we can come and go and be fluid. Doors close, that means this is a do not disturb time. And you've indicated as a family a certain room in the house that is the door open, door closed space. Yep, that's exactly. And I know not many people are fortunate enough to have that. You know, we're, we're lucky enough to have it where I have an extra room on the side of the house. So it's felt almost like, you know, I'm so busy business as usual from about nine to five, other than, you know, breaking for lunch. Um, my son, my younger son's in second grade. My older son is in middle school. So my older son's pretty self-sufficient, but the younger one still needs a lot of help. And luckily my husband has the flexibility to kind of monitor him and work with him so that I can work. No, I know I, I have a lot of patients who are single parents, moms or dads. And one thing I've been talking with them about is even designating perhaps a chair at the kitchen table that when they're sitting in that chair, that lets the child know to the best of the child's ability, recognizing different age ranges, um, even you know different executive processing considerations, ADHD, you know sensory concerns. But at least in that chair, it's kind of a marker of okay, it's work time. That's exactly what we had to do, and we had we learned really mm -hmm. early we have to separate them <laughs> into two different markers, um, okay. where they're not in the same space, you know, because they're very easily distracted. So. Um, my son works in, you know, the office with my husband, my older son, and then my younger one has a place on the kitchen table. It's all set up for, you know, his, his work and, it, you know, you're there until your work is done. Um, but, you know, they get easily frustrated and a lot of times something that's easy, you know, they can get uncomfortable and they need a little extra help. And the thing I, I learned this really early when we were virtual is if you can take the minute or 10 minutes to get them feeling comfortable again, that will pay off in hours and hours to follow versus adding to the stress. Um, so it, it's just one thing, like my biggest advice is like when you feel that energy, like I can hear it in my office when things are getting heated and there's frustration, yeah. you know, one of us has to come in as like the neutral party yeah. and kind of kill the fire and reset and then everybody can kind of keep moving on in their day. And what you said a minute ago about our own nervous system playing a role in their emotional state is so true. You know, caregivers, we are the we are the regulators for our for children. Yeah. And so if our energy is disruptive or if we're feeling hectic or frantic or overwhelmed, our children are going to pick up on that too. And so yeah. taking those moments to really intentionally you know, be mindful to calm yourself down. You know, I, I do a lot of havening and I know, you, I know you've done havening too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but finding the breath work, the meditation, whatever it might be to help the household stay calm. And then when things start to get agitated, I know we spoke a couple of days ago and you noticed, you know, your two sons were starting to get a little involved with one another and you're on a big phone call and your own kind of <laughs> In, intrapersonal distress of wanting to go help your sons yeah and also knowing that you needed to stay on the call because this is the livelihood for your not just your family but also your entire company right so how do you find balance within that yeah that's a that's actually been a work in progress for you know the 20 years of my career <laughs> to be honest but um you know learning techniques like the havening um i actually do a lot of meditation and um also EFT tapping. Um, and I actually have done that with my kids. Um, I have kids that are very, um, they're very, they're empaths. They feel things, they can pick up on, on energy. So um, teaching them breathing techniques, like, okay, I'm holding on to them. Like my biggest thing is I just like literally hug them and I don't care how mad they're trying to push me away until you just physically feel their body kind of melt and you have them breathe. And it just like is a, is like a switch. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'll be the first to tell you, I, I've lost it many times. And I think the difference- We are all human. <laughs> yeah. But the difference between now versus, you know, when I was trying to do this um, 
virtually when it wasn't as accepted mm -hmm. is back then you were always on call. So you could mute, you could yell, you could throw something uh, and nobody would ever know. But now the expectation is to be yeah. on Zoom and video and you, you kind of have to keep it together. Um, <laughs> You, you can't just pound your head into the desk at a moment yeah. when it feels appropriate. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so it's kind of a, a, a balance and you have to regulate yourself, like you were saying, and you have to teach the kids like a, a regulation kind of activity too, um, I think. And they just have to, they, they have to learn boundaries. And I think that's really hard for a child when they meet their mom um, mm -hmm. and they're frustrated or their brother's picking on them. Um, but I think, you know, modeling that calm sense of <laughs> energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I want to wrap this up for now and I just kind of reflect some of the key tips that we're, we're hearing here. I mean, what you just shared is so, so, so valuable about really my takeaway from that was having compassion and patience for ourselves as we're navigating this and modeling that for our children. And the more that we're doing our own autonomic nervous system regulation, the more we're supporting their systems and staying calm. Yep. But also recognizing that when things get tough, this is a tough time. And so it's important for all you know those conversations to happen and to do the meditation and the breath work, but not just for ourselves, but for our children as well and teach them how to do their own regulation and to model that. Yep. And I think most importantly, giving yourself compassion and grace, you know, and understanding that everybody is in the same boat. I mean, this is the first time where everybody understands because they're going through it too. So you just can't take it too hard and let that, you know, give you anxiety or make you anxious. And you just have to roll with it. I think go with the flow is the best advice. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and within that, though, creating the structure, like, you know, doing, yeah. getting some, some work accomplished in the morning. And then when your children wake up, being attuned and connected with them, getting them set up for their day, everybody having workstations, even if it's just everybody has a different chair at the kitchen table. Yes. At least everybody has a workstation that they go to. And in terms of brain functioning, our brain loves knowing that when I'm in this spot, I work. And when I leave this spot, I'm free. Yep. And so, I think it's important for us too, as workers, to be right. able to close the door and work because it's so easy to bring that into your home and you have to figure out how to mark that cut that I'm done working and I'm now going to be mom, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I know we'll have another conversation, um, a little bit about the balance of mom and leadership, um, soon because that, that's such a difficult conversation or balance to manage and how as a leader to model that for our teams. And so that's going to, going to be the next chat that Jamie and I have. Um, Jamie, any things that you, anything else you'd like to add as we sign off here? Thank you again so much for your time. I think it's such a tricky world that we're navigating and to be a mom and a business owner and a leader, and you really embody what it means to be a leader. It's, it takes a lot of fine tuning, and a lot of hard work. Yeah, I think the most important thing is take care of yourself first, you know, and don't don't be too hard on yourself. I think that's the best advice that I've ever gotten is that you can't take care of other people, whether they're your employees or your kids, if you're not okay and you don't take the time for yourself first to kind of ground yourself. So um, even if it's taking 10 minutes, you know, throughout the day, I think that's so important. Yeah, absolutely. Powerful and very important advice. Thank you. And uh, as we said, Jamie can be found at with a Smarty social media and the, we'll have some contact information for her in the show notes here. And thank you again for sharing your wisdom with us. And I look forward to speaking with you soon. Yeah, thank you.